Hi guys, welcome back to the Maybelline Makeup Loft. My name is Shanae. So today we're going to be doing a Makeup 101 and we're going to be taking it back to the very beginning. Back to all the basics, things I wish I was taught when I started doing makeup. So if you guys are already makeup beauty junkies, you probably already know all of these things, but all of these tips and lessons are things I really, really, really wish Someone told me when I started, hopefully I don't ramble too much because five lessons could turn into 10, but we'll see what happens throughout the video. I'm going to give you guys my most like important tips and tricks, I guess. But anyway, before we get into it, don't forget to thumbs up the video, subscribe, hit the bell button so you guys are notified every time we upload new Maybelline Makeup Loft videos. And let's just get straight into it. So I have already primed and moisturized my face. We're going to get into one of the biggest lessons and that is matching your foundation. When I was younger, I had no idea. I used to walk around with foundation way too dark for me. Yeah, I just used to wear really dark foundation. I don't even think my mum knew. Like, she just never corrected me. She didn't really care. So what you want to do when matching your foundation is you want to match it to your neck and your body, I guess. You don't want to use the foundation color that matches your face because if I did that, then I'd end up with a really light face and then a really dark body because of my fake tan. Sometimes it's opposite for some people. Some Sometimes um, their faces might be a little bit darker and their body might be a bit lighter. It just depends on the person, but you want to match it to your neck. So obviously I'm going to have to go in with a more tan foundation. I think I might use the Maybelline Superstay Multi-Use Foundation Stick. This one is in the color 130 Buff Beige. I'm hoping this will be tan enough for me. I think it will. Um, don't be alarmed. I'm just going to smack it on there. And then we'll blend it out with a brush. You can use whatever you want to apply your foundation. There's no rule to that. Whatever you feel like works the best, brush, sponge, fingers, anything. I like using like a brush because I find that quicker. And I'm just going to start blending that in. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully it matches me because there's still times that I don't get it right. And that's fine because everyone makes mistakes. We're all human. But so far, I think that is matching pretty well. You also don't want to forget your ears just so they blend in and I don't have like little white ears poking out. Okay, I've put my concealer on and my next lesson is to set your face. And that's pretty much it. I know a lot of people would be like, well, duh, you set your face. But honestly, like I had no idea about setting powder when I started doing makeup. I had no idea why my makeup used to move melt off and I'm like why does everyone else look amazing and my makeup just comes off and I do have oily skin as well which I didn't know back then I had no idea what skin types were I didn't know people had dry oily textured skin I don't know I just really didn't know that was a thing so this step, we're going to set our face. This will hold our makeup in place. But if you're someone who does have dry skin and you feel like powders just dry your skin out, I would recommend maybe just not using one or using powder only where you kind of need it, maybe under the eyes and around the T-zone area. And the powder I'm using today is the Fit Me Loose powder in the color 10 Fair. I like to do my under eyes first because I feel like they can crease and this just kind of really holds it all in and stops it from moving around. Also make sure you pat out those creases before you set it because if you set it with the crease, it doesn't really like blend out well. Isn't it funny like, I do makeup all the time now and simple thing like setting your face just wasn't known to me at all. I think my mum didn't use to set her face as well. So that's probably why I just didn't know what it was. And now taking a bigger brush, I'm just going to set everywhere else really lightly. I focus the most powder on the T-zone because that's where I get the oiliest. But everywhere else is usually not too bad. So my next kind of tip lesson is blush. And it's so funny because when I started doing makeup, I didn't wear blush. I didn't like it. I don't know. I just hated blush and now I love it and I can't get enough of it. So today I'm going to use the Dream Matte Blush and this one's in the color Flirty Pink. 
This blush is a really odd formula. It's like a cream, but it also kind of turns into a powder. I don't know how to describe it, but a lot of cream blushes I can't usually put over a set base, but this one I can. Um, it looks really pigmented in the thing, but once you put it on your finger and actually blend it out, it blends out so nice and so easily. So the way I was taught to apply blush was to kind of smile and find the apples of your cheeks and then apply the blush there. But I find once once you kind of smile, put it on and then relax your face, the blush actually looks lower on your face, if that makes sense. And I feel like it just kind of brings everything down. So when I apply my blush, I try to keep my face relaxed as I can, just like this, no smiling. And then just applying it um, just kind of up here because I feel like it just really lifts everything up. I'm going to use my fingers with this product. You probably could use a duo fiber brush or something. I'm just going to take it on this finger, maybe dab it off onto my hand. You probably don't need to because this product's so light. And I'm just going to lightly put this here and kind of just put it upwards towards the cheekbone. I also like putting blush on my nose. I've said that a hundred times in my other videos. I just feel like it brings life back to the face because we've taken all the color out with foundation. You want to bring some of that color back. The next thing I'm going to do is highlight. You don't have to do this. Not everyone likes highlighting for me because I set my face so much because I'm such an oily person. I like to use a highlighter because it kind of brings that glow back to my face. Also, I'm using the Master Chrome. This one's in the color Molten Gold. I really like the Rose Gold one as well. But before we go ahead and put it on the face, I'm actually going to put this on the inner corners of the eyes. If you feel like you haven't had enough sleep and you look tired, this actually really opens up the eyes, really brightens them up a little bit. It makes it look like you've put effort in when you really haven't. And then I might take my finger and just pop that on the top. That's like my little quick eyeshadow guide. Back when I started makeup, I wasn't like a huge eyeshadow wearer. I just really wanted to, you know, correct my base, make myself look pretty flawless. And now I'm going to take kind of a small face fluffy brush and just work this on the high points of the face where the sun would hit. If you guys maybe want to see an eyeshadow 101 beginner video, I would be happy to do that because I feel like today's video is more overall appearance. Things I really wish I knew when I started doing makeup because eyeshadow wasn't like the biggest thing for me. It was more like base, blush and all that kind of stuff. But I'd be more than happy to do like maybe just one focusing on eyes and how to blend and everything. I'll put some on my cupid's bow here. I'm going to throw on some mascara. I've got the Falsies Volume Express Mascara. I don't really have any big tips for mascara. Like I feel like I've already gone through them a lot in other videos. What I do like to do though is once I apply my first coat, I like to like give it a few minutes, let that dry and then go in with my second coat and then like put the curler on them. I feel like that really lifts them up. But I think I've told you guys that like a hundred times already. We'll really focus on the brows next and I'll give you like kind of my tips on that. I'm going to let these lashes dry down for a bit and I will go in with a second coat, but we're going to move on to brows. For my brows, I'm going to use the Maybelline Tattoo Brow Brow um, Pomade and I'm going to use the brush that it came with. I'm just going to brush my brows upwards and I'm going to dip straight in and then I'm going to like kind of clean it off on the side just so I don't have too much. I usually like to start my brows um, from the tail end because I feel like I've got the most product on the brush now. And then once I get to the front, I've got less product because you don't want to make the front too harsh. And as I'm filling them in, I'm just brushing through and this softens the product a little bit. And now we can go into the front and I'm just going to create like a line right here to make a base and then just start blending it upwards. I'm just going to feather the brush up like that to make it like more hair-like. When doing brows, you have to have a light hand, otherwise they just get too dark and too blocky sometimes. And we've all been there. I'm not gonna say I've never been there. I have been there and I've been there for a while. I 
Okay guys, so we are all done. Hopefully this video was really helpful. Let me know if you want to see maybe an eyeshadow blending eye look 101 kind of video. I feel like that whole thing needs a video in itself. So just leave a comment down below. Let me and the Maybelline team know and I'd be more than happy to do that kind of video for you guys. Like I said before, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell button so you guys are notified every time we upload new videos. I'm losing my breath because I'm talking so quickly. But yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.